Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tronage and today we are talking about full sized quads. I'm talking 250 millimeter wheelbase. I'm talking about five inch props. Finally bit the bullet, picked one of these bad boys up. Got my GoPro session over here. Got a little TPU mount to hold it in place. I am set up. Or did I? Itty bitty three inch. Stay tuned. Hegler I don't think it's a name that's meant to be said. I think it's just letters. The H G L R C X J B. And that's what we're gonna be unboxing today. So here's the package, still in its bubble wrap from being shipped. So we're gonna open it up and see what we got. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this part first in this view, and then, uh, I neglected to get my X-Acto knife that I usually have, well, so I thought, oh, I can break open bubble wrap, but apparently I was wrong. Initial impressions, it's a white box, HGLRC, nice box, it's got like a holographic label on it, shrink wrapped, all right. So let's break this open real quick. Take this plastic off. And now we'll tip it down and we'll see what's in the box. So we have the HGLRC box. And it's gonna be the first time I'm opening it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little unboxing. And then uh, after I get it unboxed, if I can get this box open, we'll talk about my thoughts on it and whether or not this is something that you should get. There we go. So apparently the box is difficult to open. Okay, so here we go. Boom. This is the no receiver model. So I'm going to have to put in my own receiver into this. So that's why if you notice is these cables just kind of hanging out. That's to hook up to your receiver that you decide to install. All right, I'm just going to lift the whole thing out. It might be easier to go backwards. Okay, so there's the trick. Pull the whole foam out and then just pop it out that way. They've included some silicone here on the bottom where the batteries go, so it doesn't slip and it's a little higher up, so it doesn't rub on the bolts there. They have zip tied everything, all the wires are down. They've even zip tied the power cable, which is a very nice touch. Everything is looking quite nice, just on immediate impressions. And then also in the box, you get some, the nuts to hold up props on, as well, it looks like motor mount screws. So I'm guessing as these come out or fall out, maybe you have replacements or maybe they're a different length, I'm not sure. One thing I'm noticing that's interesting is that these motors are only held on by three screws. Maybe to reduce some weight, the way the frame is formed, there's a screw just completely missing. It's, there's no hole, there's no screw, there's no nothing. So you wanna see what I'm talking about right there. You can see it's just three screws. Main frame is just one piece body. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Firer frame in design. It's got like the side panels, the two standoffs, and then the top. It does have this part to carry a HD camera. I'm probably going to remove that though because I'd rather fly this without an HD camera because I think it would be bogging this one down. And then we got some props here. Looks like you get two clockwise, two counterclockwise. So that's pretty cool. Matching color purple. Awesome. Battery strap. Won't be using that because that's the junky kind. Gonna be using the nice kind that you can actually cinch down. And then it looks like it comes with a uh, little instruction pamphlet here. And it really just shows you the layout of the boards, the different channels, all that kind of information. So I'll hold this up for you guys. And if you want to read, just feel free to pause it. So now that we've gotten the unboxing covered, now we're going to start opening this guy up and seeing what's inside, 
making sure everything's connected properly, making sure there's nothing that uh, we need to be addressed, make sure, for example, our video antennas attached and just basically going over the insides and making sure everything is good to go. Now I am happy to see that everything's been zip tied, but uh, we're gonna open this up and see what's going on inside. As well, I'm gonna be installing my receiver and the receiver that I'm gonna be using is the uh, Spectrum serial with telemetry receiver. The reason why I'm gonna be using this receiver is again, I'm a big fan of the diversity antennas and the fact that it has telemetry. This is gonna be my first attempt at using this res particular receiver because as I'm flying around right now, I feel like I'm flying blind. I don't know when I'm in or out of range. I just know I'm fine and I try to fly where I feel safe, but I don't know really where I'm at. And it would be nice to have a signal on my transmitter saying, hey, you're, you're almost about to go out of range maybe you don't want to go over there. So we're gonna start taking this guy apart and seeing what we got here. I want to take off the top plate first. All right, that got us some goodness. I'm gonna to have to clip that one zip tie for now. There we go. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off for now this little GoPro bracket because I currently do not have any intention of flying it with a GoPro or any form of a HD camera on it for now. Let's pop that off. If ever I change my mind, I can always re-add it. It's not permanent. Not so thrilled about this connection here with it bending up like that. I might put a little hot glue just to hold this down. We'll see how that goes. It's actually kind of nice how they routed the wires for the motors going in like that and then coming forward. I have to say all the solder joints look very shiny. The only ones that don't look shiny are the two for the power connectors, but everything else looks really nice and shiny. I'm gonna guess, but clearly the black and the red should be ground and power, but I'm not sure what the yellow, the blue, and the green pins are. In the meantime, I can also start thinking about where I wanna house my transmitter. It might have to live right like that. Kind of on top of my camera. Kind of smashed in there a little bit. Because it is a little bit bigger of a receiver. So the part that's giving me issue is this little LCD screen. If it didn't have this big LCD screen sticking up, I'd have a lot more room. Essentially what they did is pretty clever. This bundle of wires is so that you can hook up both a 3.3 volt receiver, which is what I'm usually used to using, and a 5 volt receiver, which is what this is now. This requires from 4 to 8 volts. The wires for Spectrum that I'm going to be worrying about, I'm going to want the 5 volt wires are the red and the black, so that's what I'm going to use for power and ground. So I'm going to hook this up to the DSMX port, but with the 5 volt power that's over by the S bus pins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut all of this stuff off. I don't need any of that. So we'll have a little bit of extra wires and it'll be a little extra messy, but it'll be a little easier too. First things first, we can cut these guys off. Before I cut anything over here, I'm just gonna solder everything up and just make sure everything works first. The last thing you wanna do is uh, Cut a bunch of stuff and then find out you cut the wrong thing. Look a million wires in here. I'm like a three wire guy. All right, so I'm gonna solder some things and we'll be back. All right, so I've gone in and I soldered this up. If you notice, I've left all my wires long intentionally because if I've screwed something up, I wanna first test it and make sure everything is working first. So I'll show you what I did. I ran my telemetry for the battery down and through, and that's tapping in right here on this little plus and minus that I found on the side there. I attached the red and the black, which are the five volt leads to the red and the black on the receiver. And I know it doesn't look like I have heat shrink, but my heat shrink is clear. And for the yellow and the green, the yellow is 
for SBUS, and the green is PPM. So those are the other protocols. So if you've noticed, I've just taken a little bit of a liquid electrical tape and uh, put a little blob on the tips so that they're not bare and shorting out, but I don't want to clip them off just yet. So the concept here is before I shorten wires and pack it all in and then find out something's not working, in case there's a problem, I have wires to work with. With a wired up as such, with the red to red, the black to black, and the blue to blue, what I'm going to do now, I'll show you when I power it up. Now I see the receiver is still not lighting up, and that's because my transmitter is not turned on, so it has nothing to bind to. So, we're going to now turn on my transmitter. And now you see that orange light has turned on, and if I flip my beeper button on my transmitter, you can hear it beeping. Now the beeping is not that loud because I still left a little sticker on the back here that says uh, remove after washing. I'm just leaving that on there for right now until I actually am finished with it so that any beeping is not blaring. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bundle these up a little bit, kind of tuck them all in so they're not out and getting into the props or anything. So I took it out on its maiden and it flew really well for stock settings and the fresh brand new. It was really stable, really easy to control, had a lot of oomph. They're very surprising. You can see I didn't even really crash it. I had one little crash and it wasn't even... It was because of line of sight and I got all, I don't know, squirrely, I guess you could say. But I was flying it with these packs, which is kind of surprising. These are um, Tattoo 1300 3S packs, and they're only 45C. But I happen to have them laying around, so I figured let's see how it flies with these packs before I invest in buying some packs that would be dedicated for this. And when I looked up the specs, a lot of people were recommending 4S 850s by Tattoo with the 75C which obviously is going to have a lot more output, a lot more punch, because it's a 4S instead of a 3S, and it's 75C instead of 45C, meaning it can discharge more power. The weight of that pack was the same as this pack. So I said, you know what? Weight-wise, it's the same. In theory, the pack should perform relatively similar, but without the extra oomph. And I would say it had a pretty lot of oomph as it was, so I don't know if I'm going to buy new packs or not. I'm still up in the air now that i've come back i've buttoned everything up you can see it's much cleaner now on the inside everything looks nice and neat and i'll tell you what i did took out my vtx i desoldered the wires that were not being used by spectrum the yellow wire and the green wire i desoldered them off of the flight controller so they weren't in the way snugged everything else up nice and tidy tucked it all underneath between the boards and everything so everything was nice and happy in here and made sure all my wires were all the right length and everything so that I can have my big honking transmitter sitting in here but it fits perfectly fine right like that so I advise you adv you set up your VTX before you put your top plate on because you see as you put the top plate on you can't see the display on your VTX and the issue here is that it's not so intuitive to set. So in case you're like me and didn't feel like reading the directions, I'll tell you the story of how it works. If you long press the button for five seconds, you'll then be selecting your power rating. So it'll be a zero, one dash, two dashes, or three dashes, which is zero would be like a pit mode, 25 milliwatt, 100 milliwatt, and 250 milliwatt are zero, one, two, and three bars. If you do a short press and just go click, 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 you're gonna be changing your channel one through eight. If you do a long press, but only two seconds, so the problem I was having is distinguishing between the two second press and the five second press. Without having the instructions in front of me, I didn't know what was going on. So basically, a long press, but two seconds, will then let you change your bands. And the other thing that screwed me up is, this has four more bands that I'm not accustomed to. It also has band U, band O, band L, and band H. Reference. I think you should be able to see that. So when I'm trying to find the band I'm usually transmitting on, I got all confused why, where it was going, and what it was doing. So essentially, to avoid the confusion, read your instructions that came with it. Set your VTX before you cap it off so it's ready to go. And then I also made my little 3D printed part here. I got my two straws for my antenna. These are the four screws that are going to hold the top plate on. And then this is the zip tie because I was going to put some hot glue on this 
point right here to hold this down on my video transmitter so that doesn't accidentally pop off and then I end up with powering it up with my antenna not attached because I'm not so thrilled with this connector and the orientation that it's in. But what they did from the factory and I'm going to continue doing is after you feed this part through here, they ran a zip tie around this. So once it's zip tied to this part of the frame, there's not going to be any tension, I guess, on this to pop that connector open. My plan is that that should be good enough. Because if I put a blob of hot glue on here and then I ever do decide to change this whip out to put like an axi or, you know, something else that would be a little, sm like a little small, like an axi would probably be nice versus this dipole. But uh, I'm not really sure how that would, where it would live on here. I really wouldn't have a good mount for it. But anyway, that's regardless. The point is if I ever wanted to change it out, it'd be a pain in the butt to pick out all that hot glue. Without further ado, let's get this thing assembled and put together. And then what you want to do is I'm kind of making it so that this antenna crosses over and goes up that way. And then this antenna comes over that way. Guide them to do such a, to do that, such of a thing like that. See how now they're, each one's in that little notch of the X. And it's a kind of a natural way that it wants to be. So everything's lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the front screws in first so that I don't have to hold this with my finger. I'm not gonna snug them all the way down just yet. I, want, I like when I tighten things to tighten everything equally. So now for the back here, now we have a couple of things that we need to do, but now since these front screws have been installed, we have a little more wiggle room because we don't have to worry about things shifting around. My little 3D printed piece, I'm gonna run my antennas through that. And I just want to make sure that the, the one antenna going this way is going to come out that side and vice versa. So I just feed them through. Feed them through. Give them a little help to pop through. And it goes down like that. And same thing, we're going to put the screws in on this side. Now we'll do a little final assembly. Zip tie to hold our VTX to one side. Then the, whenever you're applying zip ties, like my complaint was on the in the bottom here, always consider when you put it on which way the little box portion is going to be and make sure that's going to be where you want it to be and how it's going to be oriented. Because if you just stick it on there, you may end up with it not being correct. So for example, here, I would want this to be like here with the box part on this side. So I'm just going to open it up, then I can stick it through, and then I can snug it up now that I have it situated properly. Let's clip off our excess. Okay. We can give that a little bend up if we want. And now for our antenna tubes, those are simple. We just stick them on. A good wedge into that hole there. Same thing on this side. And then what I like to do, just to make sure they're all the way seated, I'm going to take my pliers and just give them a little extra twist and push just to make sure they're all the way in there deep. Because otherwise, you have a little tiny minor crash, the next thing you know, your antenna tube pops off. Okay, there we go. And we are all set. Okay, so a little quick update. When I went to assemble it, I just wasn't happy with these uh, smaller screws that were the stock ones, because with my 3D part, obviously I'm adding some thickness to mount it onto the quad. These look like they're about M2 by five millimeter, I'm guessing. So I'm switching them out to be M2s by seven because the thickness that I'm adding here is two millimeters. So in theory, if I have a two millimeter longer screw, then I'm compensating for the two millimeter thickness that I put as my holder for my antenna mount. So just for the sake of complacency, not complacency, 
I'm making up a word maybe, but just for the sake of being complete, I'm going to reassemble this using the correct screws so that I'm not trying to fool you with any changes. I'm being straight up honest and telling you exactly what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Because the back here just felt like it didn't have any bite into those standoffs. Now, that's rock solid. I think that came out really nice. Okay, and now back to our antenna tubes. There we go. So it's all set up with our new screws installed. Three days later. To bring you an update, because I've added a couple more things, I've had a chance to really fly this quad, and I'm having a blast doing so. What have I been doing with this? Well, essentially I've been flying the bejesus out of it. Yes, I the actual bejesus. If you look, it actually came out of the back over here. I've been flying them with these tattoo packs. They're 1300 MAH, uh, 3S, but they're only 45C. So they don't have that high of a discharge rate, which is, I'm feeling maybe hampering the performance of this quad. Now don't get me wrong, with, with this pack on it, it is flying beyond my expectations. However, knowing that this is a 3S and not a 4S, because this can handle a 4S pack, and knowing that it only has a 45C discharge rate, I know I've got to be just losing it in some of these punch outs. So I've gone on and I've ordered from a Tattoo. I'm getting a couple of their 4S 850 milliamp hour packs. Now, yes, I'm going to sacrifice in flight time because this is 1300 MAH and they're going to be 850. This quad is not about how long it can be up in the air. I feel like this quad is how much punch I can have. And if I ever want to have a longer flight, I can just throw these packs right on. They're not going anywhere. That's what I've been flying with. Now, since these packs that I had have the XT30 connector on them, I am also having to run a XT30 to XT60 adapter on here. I don't want to change out either of these connectors because the tattoo packs that I'm getting do have the XT30 connector on them, so I'm going to stick with that. These are, uh, I was actually using them to power some LED lights for some gates. The other thing I've added, which I teased in the very beginning of this video, is this what I called a GoPro session. It really does have that look and feel and attitude of a GoPro session. However, it's not a GoPro session, clearly, because this thing is only about an inch big. You know, my, I can cover it with one finger. What this actually is, this camera, I picked this up off of Banggood. Links will be down in the description below, so check them out if you want to pick up one of these. It's called an SQ-11. And it's just a little teeny high def camera. It was relatively cheap, and I'm, I also could pick up the uh, the TPU mount because unfortunately my 3D printer does not do good with TPU. So I actually purchased the mount from Banggood as well. This works great because now with this configuration, I have a high def GoPro. Now, granted, it's not amazing but it's certainly better than the dvr footage that i could put up so the fact that i'm able to record my flights in somewhat of high def and not have to deal with dropouts screen tearing fuzz interference all that sort of stuff that's great it also lets me have a little bit of audio because this quad doesn't have any kind of microphone on the video transmitter so i'll have an audio signal that you can if you want to hear what my motors are doing and it really does not weigh that much at all in fact i think it's so nice i actually bought it twice so because i have one that's not on a quad I can give you even how much weight this thing has. And I mean, this feels like it weighs nothing. The camera by itself weighs 10.1 grams. If you add the mount, 17.4. In full disclosure, when I jammed this camera into this mount, the sticker kind of half peeled off. The sticker's barely on here. It's, it's like nothing. So I would remove it just because it makes putting it into this case a lot easier. And then you really just, you just jam it in. You wanna be careful not to hit, hurt that buttons as you go across the top and boom, you're in the case, you're ready to go. So this camera works really, really well. I'm very pleased with it. I'm gonna show uh, some footage in the part two. And for reference, 
with this camera, I'm gonna cut now. Hang on, let me start this up. Now with this camera, I'm recording. So now it's gonna fade with some magic of photography to the little camera video. And you can see, it's not that bad. I mean, I have no idea how I'm holding this and what I'm seeing because there's no viewfinder. And to give you an idea of what the audio sounds like, I will now switch to the audio of the camera. And this is what the audio sounds like when you talk on the camera. And we're going to fade back to the normal camera for the quad. And I will stop recording on this camera. It's a little complicated to use. And I, by complicated, I mean that the instruction manual is useless. Basically, there's just two buttons on the top. You basically push this the button over here to the right of the lens if you're behind it. And that'll turn this blue light on. And once that blue light is on, you click the button to start your filming. The light will blink three times and then turn off. Now it's actually recording another video clip. And then if I click the button again, the blue light returns and that means it stopped filming. And that's it. And then to turn it off, you can just push and hold. I think it's six seconds and the blue light will eventually turn off, which it just did. And now it's off. There's all kinds of other, you can use it to take pictures and there's a night vision mode. That's what these little dots are around here. Those little uh, infrared emitters. I haven't played with any of that because the range on that, it says in the manual is like three meters. It's not like you're gonna be recording anything in the dark. It also has motion sense and stuff. And that would be great if you're using this for like a nanny cam maybe or something. But for the purposes of this, I turn it on, I start recording, I stop recording and I turn it off. That's all I needed it to do. You can also flip between the different modes. I'm deciding which one I like better. It has 720p at 30 frames a second or 1080p at 15 frames a second, something like that. So the DVR footage that I've been recording is just the default, which is the, I think the 30 frames per second is more important than the resolution considering the fact that the DVR footage is terrible. So anything's an improvement and I'd rather the 30 frames per second than the 15 frames a second because then you're not really seeing the movements. Um, what I I am noticing is be the the lens being a little pinhole lens it doesn't have the field of view that my lens does on the quad itself nor does it have the field of view of like a gopro wood it's a very tight field of view but i'll take it again for under 20 grams on this little itty bitty three inch i mean i probably could put a full size session on here and if i owned a session i would probably try and see how it went it would look probably quite ridiculous since the session would probably be as big as the entire top of the quad. And you, because I mean, you can see this, the SQ11 looks the right size based on the quad. For now, this is what I got. And in part two, I'm going to show you some DVR footage. I'll also show you what it looks like when I use this camera. But part two will be coming soon. And I'll show you some flight footage. But I'll tell you right now. With this pack on here, and this is not the ideal pack whatsoever. It's big, it's heavy, and it's 3S, and it's not a high discharge rate. It's like completely wrong. And it still flies so much fun. Like I'm having a blast. Like this is inspiring me, this guy. I'm having so much fun flying this guy. It's like not even, cr it's, I can't even put into words how much fun I'm having flying this little guy for three inches of, you know, quad here. It's 145 millimeters. This thing is so much fun. Like this is something you should probably go and pick up. Check out the links in the description below. I mean, I gave you the whole how to set it up, how to put a receiver into this thing, how to get going. So I hope it helps you out and go pick yourself up one and start flying this thing because this thing is bad to the bone. Plus it's purple. Hey, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, Perhaps you'd like to subscribe. Check out the latest videos. I'm always posting new content. If you'd like, you'd also become a supporter on my Patreon page. And while you're at it, here's some other videos that you might like. This one over here is the latest one I posted. And this one I think might interest you. Check them out. See ya.